all right man finally we got the complete legend of zelda timeline explained i promise you guys that i would catch up with the lore i was like you know what let's know why not let's let's just watch it together and then i was like yeah so uh, i found the complete just complete timeline 48 minutes which you guys get your popcorn um and just for a heads up i'm not going to be talking every single second of the video i actually want to learn something so um so yeah, if i talk a little less than i usually do my bad let's get right to the video ah uh, the legend of zelda timeline one of the most infamous timelines in all get your gaming. popcorn nintendo's fantasy franchise unfurls its tale of grand adventure across 19 mainline games that kicks off from a rather neat starting point There's 19 of three them totally separate timelines and then sort of back again. Yeah, it's an absolute minefield of a timeline, and it's not made any simpler by the fact that Nintendo has already retconned it a handful of times in the years since it was first introduced in this beast. And with Tears of the Kingdom further expanding the timeline, what better time to dive back into the many adventures of Link, be they big or small, by land, Look sea, at Link, or man. air, He's such a goat. or just plain weird? Yay! Hey, my name's Adam, and this is the complete <laughs> Zelda timeline fully explained. He said yes! Alright, man. Make sure y'all get y'all popcorn, man. Sit back, relax. The Legend of Zelda's sweeping narrative kicks off with, well, nothing. A whole load of nothing, actually. Well, a whole load of nothing and the odd bit of cosmic space rain, but mostly nothing. Into this nothingness come the three goddesses. Din, Nehru, and Ferrore. Okay. Din, the goddess of power, creates land. Nehru, goddess of wisdom, brings order. And Ferrore, the goddess of courage, breathes life into the world. Okay. And thus, the land of Hyrule is born. Okay, I didn't even know that. Or the land that Hyrule will become, at least. As the three goddesses depart back into the heavens, they leave behind three shiny golden triangles, which form the Triforce a magical artifact that's left in the care of another goddess known as Hylia. The Triforce, aside from being a very expensive looking slab of bling, mm -hmm. actually grants wishes to those who come into contact with it. Those with just the right balance of the three virtues of the goddesses, okay. power, wisdom and courage, will unlock its true potential. Those okay. who don't fit that somewhat complex cosmic criteria will break apart the Triforce, taking a hold of the piece that best fits their personality and leaving the other two bits to go walkies. Oh. Or something to that effect. Okay. And naturally, when you create a source of omnipotent power, there are going to be a fair few wrongins that want to get their hands on it. Obviously. And that brings us nicely along to the very first game in our timeline. I remember him. Skyward Sword, okay. I remember that big Skyward dude. Skyward Sword sits pretty right at the very beginning of this timeline and pretty much establishes all the key elements of the iconic legends that we'll come to know across the timeline. And all of that kicks off with a great big bloody fight for the Triforce. It's the era of the goddess Hylia. They fight for that goal. Are running amok, led by a malevolent demon king known as Demise. In order to protect her people from demise, Hylia gathers them all up on a chunk of land and fires them off into the sky, which feels a little extreme, but desperate times, I guess. Hylia herself stays behind and eventually defeats Demise before sealing him away. In order to finish him off for good, Hylia tries to use the Triforce herself, but because she's a goddess, she can't wield its true power. So in mm. another desperate move, Hylia demotes herself from goddess to human, and I think you can see where this is going. Okay, yeah. yeah. That demotion sees Hylia reborn as a human, but not oh. any old human, Zelda. She's reborn as Zelda. And so the legend starts. So she was a, a goddess first. Okay, then okay. she... Okay. Remember that slab of land that Hylia sent off into the sky? Mm -hmm. Well, that becomes the Isle of the Goddess, which eventually twins itself with the flying island of Skyloft. With the bloody battle on the surface fresh in their memory, Skyloft develops a strong military presence, which eventually becomes the Night Academy, effectively a small army of flying cops who protect and serve the people of the skies. Okay. And that's where our pointy-eared hero, Link, first yes, comes into sir. the story. He takes part in the Night Academy's wing ceremony and absolutely smashes it, beating his obnoxious peer Groose to first place and the honor of performing in the ceremony of the goddess opposite Zelda. Right, aside hey. from that great big battle at the beginning, this all sounds bloody adorable, but not for long. Entering stage left is the flamboyant demon lord Girahim. <laughs> that boy looks like Zamasu. He's by Demise to hunt down the reincarnation of Hylia, aka Zelda. Girahim scours the land before he finally tracks down Zelda to the skies, and with the help of a devastating tornado, he flings Zelda down to the depths below. And this is where the next part of The Legend of Zelda starts to take shape. You see, our blonde lad Link is told about his destiny by the head of the Knight Academy, a okay. wise old keeper of legends called Gaipora. 
Gaepora, the wise old owl of a man, guides Link to finding the Goddess Sword, an ancient weapon left behind by Hylia to guide a chosen hero. How is an inanimate object guiding a grown lad, I hear none of you ask? Well, that's where the sword spirit Fee comes into play. Effectively a blue robot satnav, Fee that? guides Link to plunge down through the impenetrable clouds separating Skylar from the lands below. And so begins Link's quest to rescue Zelda for the very first time. Zelda first baby! Time, chronologically. Fortunately, Zelda has miraculously survived her fall. Her rescuer is an old woman who tells Zelda that she's the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia, and that to unlock her memories and full potential, she needs to cleanse herself in two temples. Zelda hastens to do just that and regains her memories in the process. All this new divine information rattling around her head triggers an epiphany. To strengthen the seal on the imprisoned demise, she makes the executive decision to travel back in time to the sacred temple and take a nap. Not any old nap though, like a really long nap, a thousand year long nap. But she's nearly thwarted before this plan can even get off the ground when she's attacked by Girahim at the temple. She slept for a thousand years? Link shows up just in time and holds back Girahim while Zelda and her protector, a warrior woman called Impa, escape into the past. On their way out, Impa destroys the gate and they pass through so that no one can follow them. With Zelda napping in the past, Link's work is cut out holding back Yo, the Yo, I'm over here fighting eight-armed robots. Is she sleeping? ...with a source of sacred power, which eventually transforms it into the iconic Master Sword. A sword so powerful, it allows him to literally travel back in time to have a quick conflab with a pre-nap Zelda. Upon returning to the present, Link seeks out the fabled Triforce, and upon discovering it, is deemed worthy of its power and is granted a wish. He wishes for the statue of the goddess to be returned to its original place on the surface, where it handily destroys Man, I want a billion rollers. That's what I want. That's my, that's my wish. Number. And with that, the story of Skyward Sword comes to a close. Hold up. That's not how it ends. Oh, no. There's one last twist in this tale. You see, that Pratt Girahim is still knocking about, and he nabs Zelda and travels back in time to reawaken Demise before he gets crushed by a giant statue. Link follows in pursuit and after an epic battle, defeats both Girahim and the reawakened Demise. With the Demon King defeated once and for all, which as you'll come to see is something of a lie, his sheer oh, evil no. and hatred is absorbed into the Master Sword, which effectively kickstarts the beginning of a curse. A curse that sees Link, Zelda, and the literal embodiment of hatred locked into a never-ending battle between good and evil. With peace returning to the lands above and below, the Master Sword is returned to its pedestal inside the Goddess statue, yeah. waiting for the next hero to emerge and fight the everlasting curse. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I know that that was a lot to take in, but at least we've established the core elements of the Legend of Zelda. I'm just franchise. trying to keep up. So stick with me. Okay. The Sacred Realm. First things first, the surface lands from the era of Skyward Sword eventually become the Kingdom of Hyrule, the central location for most games in the franchise. Peace extends across the lands for many generations, but after a while, rumors of the power of the Triforce start to spread. And Bro, these are the Nintendo 64 rule. graphics. With the Triforce at risk, its latest protector, Rauru, the Sage of Light, <laughs> builds the Temple of Time supposedly over the ruins of the Seal Temple from Skyward Sword. Here, he locks up the Master Sword behind the Door of Time and places the Triforce in the the Temple of Light, which is sealed away in the Sacred Realm, which itself is now separated from Hyrule. Gosh, that's a lot of grandiose titles in the last couple of sentences. To summarize, the Triforce and the Sacred Realm are locked away from bad people. Okay, that's, right. the Triforce, well, that's nice the descendants then. of the goddess Hylia build Hyrule Castle next door to the Temple of Time, and establish the royal family to protect it. As they're all effectively descendants of a goddess, many of them are born with special powers. Okay. And it's during this time that the tradition of naming their princesses Zelda is started. Minish Cap. Boy, that's Cap. Years pass by and peace extends across the lands. Yeah. That is until yet another wave of evil washes across Hyrule. I guess that curse ain't messing about. In this latest bout of terror, the people of Hyrule are saved by, of all things, a tiny little fella known as a Pickery, who brings with him a sword and a golden light. The latest flavor of the Hero of Men uses them to restore peace and seal the evil in a big old chest for future generations to worry about. And and I'm behold, burning that chest. They're just going to save it in the chest? I'm the burning that. Of Zelda adventures. In honor of their little savior, Hyrule holds a Pickery Festival, and legends state that the Pickery will return every century. And guess what? 
It's been 100 years since they were last seen. The festival culminates with a sword fighting tournament and the winner of this year's tourney is a shifty looking wizard lad called Varty, who true to his appearance causes a scene by breaking open the chest full of bad sh before turning <laughs> Princess Zelda into a stone statue. He also breaks the Pickery Sword in the process to Gave her that Majin Boo treatment. it turns out that the key to saving Zelda is through the magic of the sword. Because we need a reason to explore Hyrule. This prompts a capless link to seek out the tiny Pickery people, who actually call themselves the Minish. And en route, he bumps into a weird little bird hat thing called Ezlo. You see, it turns out Ezlo is a Minish sage, who's also fallen foul of Varty, hence why he's a bird hat thing. Huh? Ezlo joins forces with Link and the pair seek out the Minish. They oh, okay. probably tell them that to fix the sword, they'll need to seek out four elements around Hyrule. And long okay. story short, Link seeks out the four elements, obtains some powerful new items and defeats some bosses. You okay. Know, normal Zelda sh**. Yeah, yeah, just the norm. Varty, however, is biding his time. In his quest to seek the fabled golden light of the Pickery, he learns of the power of the Pickery sword and instead of being proactive about it, he's just happy for Link to do all the hard work. This all comes to a head when Link fuses the elements of the Pickery Sword to create that man a the Four Sword, which gives the wielder the ability to quadruple himself. Link uses this power to see off Varty, who's busy draining the Light Force out of Zelda. Who that's a pretty, that's a pretty cool power. I can't lie though. Light. And with Varty thwarted, the curses on Zelda and Ezlo break, and Hyrule is restored to its former glory. Okay. Peace in Hyrule, however, does not last long. Four Swords. Okay. Okay, so Varty, the crafty old bastard, reappears out of nowhere and starts terrorizing Hyrule. But yet another legendary hero, or should that be heroes plural, stand in his way when they harness the power of the Four Sword and defeat him. Okay, so there's four of them. The okay. The Four Sword itself. Generations pass as they tend to do after these Zelda prologues, and surprise, surprise, Varty breaks free. He kidnaps the latest incarnation of Princess Zelda and hightails it into the night. Hot on his heels are the four links that spring out of the titular four sword. Uh oh. And after collecting up a bunch of rupees and defeating some monsters to prove their worth, the four swordsmen confront Varty in his palatial den. With their strength in numbers, the links defeat Varty. Yeah, it's over. They jumped him. Boy, fight back. Boy, fight back. But for how long? Spoilers. Not long. Oh, Sheena of Time. This is okay. Well, I know this one. Oka Ocarina of Time, see, I said Oshina. Ocarina of Time. Saga, the Kingdom I'm stupid. of Hyrule is embroiled in a bleak civil war, which spreads death and destruction. I know this one though. I know Amongst this game. all this carnage, a young mother flees with her baby into the Kakiri forest, where she leaves her child with the sacred Deku tree, because trees are known to be very good foster parents, naturally. <laughs> The Deku Tree senses great things to come from the tiny baby, he agrees, and the child grows up within the Kakiri community. A community of elf-like kids who all have companion fairies and never grow old. It's kind of like Zelda's version of Peter Pan. Yeah, Peter Pan, Meanwhile, I was about to say that. the war eventually comes to an end when the King of Hyrule is able to unify the sparring tribes under one kingdom. One of the leaders of those tribes is a lad called Ganondorf, who swears allegiance uh -oh. to the king that he should under no circumstances be trusted. That man Ganondorf like nine feet tall. He big for no reason. The power of the Triforce that was last seen hidden somewhere That man Ganondorf is Castle. huge, bro. While he's keeping face with the king, Ganondorf puts into action his plan to find the three keys to the sacred realm, precious jewels dotted about Hyrule. Even the king's daughter, our latest flavor of Princess Zelda, can sense his evil. So there's like different Ganondorf's versions of it. Okay, I'm in a dream, obviously. And okay, she cool. implores her father to banish the ginger warlord from the kingdom. A plea that unfortunately falls on deaf ears. The other part of her prophetic dream was the emergence of a young boy and a fairy that would counter the evil of Ganondorf. Cue another legendary hero in the form of that aforementioned baby all grown up and his pet fairy Navi. And it turns out that he's already got one of the sacred jewels. He's a keeper. The pair hatch a plan <laughs> a for Link keeper. to nab the remaining keys to the sacred realm, while Zelda keeps an eye on Ganondorf's nefarious plans before gaining access to the Triforce to beat the demon thief at his own game. And so Link hustles around Hyrule to get the last two keys, meeting the people of fire, the Gorons, and the people of water, the Zoras, in the process. Two races that will crop up a fair whack across the rest of the timeline, so I just thought I'd name drop them here. Anyway, Link journeys back to Hyrule Castle, keys in hand, but as he's arriving at the gates to the keep, he's uh -oh. confronted by Zelda fleeing on horseback with her protector, Impa, one of the last remaining members of the Sheikah tribe, the same tribe that yeah, the same girl. The That's the same girl Zelda from the, uh, from the beginning. Sword. She's fleeing from Ganondorf, who's halfway through an attack on the castle, all in the name of stealing a musical instrument. But not any old musical So basically, Ganondorf in, his, Ganondorf in this game is like the Bowser. Time. 
a magical it's like Bowser that of this game, basically. Through space and time. I would suppose. Oh, and it's also a key to the Sacred Realm, which is kind of handy. With Zelda AWOL, Link sees through their original plan of opening the Sacred Realm, but this plan does not go well. You see, Ganondorf accesses the Sacred Realm too and is able to grab the Triforce of Power. <laughs> Boy, ugly. He's only able to grab that part as he's a rotten egg, and the other two pieces scatter to the wind at his mere whiff. Regardless, yeah. Ganondorf's invasion of the Sacred Realm turns Hyrule Castle into a literal hellscape, populated by nightmarish zombies and monsters, and a lad who will pay good money for ghosts but ignore him. Oh, wow. Anyway, Link, let's not forget, is still a child, and as a result is in no fit state to counter any of this. As he draws the Master Sword hey, but from he's pedestal, him though. it seals him within the Sacred Realm until he's the right age to take up his mantle as the Hero of Time. Damn, they put so an age limit on it? seven long years, watched over by the Sage of Light, Rauru. While he's taking this prolonged nap, Zelda is forced to go into hiding to escape Ganondorf's force. <laughs> he got sleep for seven years. And she disguises herself as Sheik, a strapping lad of the Sheikah tribe. When Link awakes, he's greeted by Sheik, who sends him off on another epic quest. This time to break the curses on five temples around the land and awaken the sages that slumber within. The end game? Lure Ganondorf into a trap and use the power of the entire contingent of sages to lock him within the sacred realm. And so our plucky adult hero ventures off high and low to save the sages and reunite the old That man Link literally slept for seven years. That's crazy. met along his travels already. Long story short, Link unites the sages and heads back to the Temple of Time where he has a long-awaited reunion with Zelda, where she reveals that she's in possession of the Triforce of Wisdom. This reunion does not last long though, as Ganondorf soon rocks up to crash the party. And kidnaps Elvis. Get over here! He's, he's so Ganondorf is literally the, the Bowser see, version of Zelda. Of the Triforce of Courage, and with all three That's crazy. together, Ganondorf makes a play to collect the full set. Following a chaotic battle atop Hyrule Castle, where Ganondorf morphs into the boar-like Ganon, Link is finally victorious. And aided okay. by Zelda and the other sages, our heroes trap Ganondorf away in the sacred realm with his precious Triforce of Power. With the curtains closing on another epic adventure, peace once again extends across Hyrule. But while the people get peace, this timeline gets pure chaos. Oh no. Let me explain. The Great Split. Uh oh. Right. Uh -oh. With all the time travel shenanigans knocking about an Ocarina of Time, it kind of breaks the timeline. And I mean really breaks the timeline. From Ocarina, the chronology splits into three different strands, the first of which is incredibly grim. That strand follows one possible outcome where the Hero of Time is defeated by Ganondorf, which sets in motion the path to A Link to the Past and the original Legend of Zelda, among others. Yeah, Nintendo came up with an actual canonical path where their central hero dies. You don't see that in Mario. The other Bats. two strands stem from the opposite outcome, where the I Hero of Time is that. successful in the fight against Ganondorf. But this is where it gets all timey-wimey. The second timeline branch sees Link return in time to his childhood, and this sets in motion the path towards Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess, which sees Ganondorf reincarnated to terrorize Hyrule once again. The third and last branch of the timeline is the adult era timeline, and basically sees a world in which the hero of time vanishes, largely because he sort of has, just back to his old childhood time. Instead of wiping this timeline clean, Nintendo just doubles down on the time paradoxes, and this sets in motion a path where Hyrule is flooded to protect the Triforce. How you just gonna leave us? Guess, leads to the maritime madness of the Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass, all before a new Hyrule is established on a new continent. Whew. So, moral of the story, you can't exactly mess with time travel and expect there not to be consequences, I guess. I, I mean, I guess I respect it because like there's like different versions of it, but bro, that's right. crazy. First, the morbid timeline. The so morbid timeline. So dies during his battle with Ganondorf during the climactic events of Ocarina of Time, and this sets in motion a path where the demon thief gains possession of the complete Triforce. Zelda and the sages are still powerful Raps. enough to seal the ginger prat away in the sacred realm, but he takes the full might of the Triforce with him. A shaky peace descends across Hyrule as the years roll by, but fueled by dark rumours about a hidden golden power, word starts to spread about the Sacred Realm, and a fair few brave souls even try to access it, never to be seen again. Yep, you see, Ganondorf's dead. residence in the Sacred Realm has turned it into the Dark World, a place of pure evil and malice, and this prompts the sages to seal the realm off for good. Fast forward a couple of generations and we reach the beginning of A Link to the Past. The Sacred Realm has remained untouched, but that all changes when a flashy wizard lad called Aghanim turns up, kills the king, and starts stealing the female descendants of the sages. 
Princess Zelda just so happens to be one of those kidnapped, and she sends out a telepathic message. What a Guess menace, she's got bro! Powers in this timeline, which is picked up by our old mate Link and his uncle, who are themselves descended from the fabled Knights of Hyrule. Link saves Zelda and escorts her through the castle sewers to a sanctuary where he is then sent out on an epic quest to find the mythical Master Sword before using it to fight back against Aghanim. After proving his worth by securing the three mystical pendants, Link finally lays his hands on the Master Sword, which yeah. now sits in a deep dark forest. Presumably the Temple of Time has crumbled away over the years. After zapping back and forth between Hyrule and the Sacred Realm, or Light and Dark Worlds as they're yeah. now called, Link eventually confronts the evil wizard atop a giant oh, yes, beef. Let's in go. the Dark World, it's beef. defeating him before taking on the game's true antagonist, Ganon, the evil pig monster, who's been pulling the strings all along. Link makes short work of Ganon, takes a hold yeah, of the trap, and Rats. wishes for peace to return to the world. And with that, we get a brief happy ending amid this timeline of doom and gloom. Peace returns to Hyrule, as does the Triforce, and even people who died at the hands of Aghanim return as well. Jobs are good. Are they on that Dragon Ball stuff? You wish everybody back. Right, now we get to the bit of the timeline that let's say is a little bit flexible. Link's Awakening. I say flexible because Nintendo themselves have straight up shifted around the order. Back in the original Hyrule Historia, the Oracle games took place after A Link to the Past. Yeah. But fast forward to the release of the Zelda Encyclopedia, and the order has changed, with Link's Awakening coming next. Nintendo announced this with all the fanfare of a footnote. Look, here it is. I can't even anyway, see it. Anyway, Link's Awakening is next up on the timeline and sees the very Ooh, same like this hero art from style. Link to the Past shipwrecked on the shores of the mysterious Kohalin Island after a training mission. And it turns what, out what, that Kohalin that is on? weird. There's a giant egg atop the central mountain and a weird sense of deja vu surrounding certain island residents that he meets. And that's because it's all a dream. Well, sort of. It turns out that Koalint has in fact been manifested by the consciousness of a windfish. And for Link to escape, he'll need to wake said windfish, destroying the island and all of its inhabitants as a result. While he Wait, may be what? used to saving kingdoms, Link does not hesitate in condemning this one, and he ventures about on his merry way to collecting eight magical instruments that will wake the windfish. And with the windfish up from you his mouth, you need eight instruments Colin to wake him up? Away to Are you be serious? Only in Link's memories, which is quite a dark ending for such a jovial adventure. So that thing was just all a dream. That's crazy. The Oracle Games. Okay. Next up, we've got the duo of Oracle games, Oracle of Seasons and Oracle of Ages, which again features the very same link from A Link to the Past. Okay. The Oracle games see a return for the Twin Rover Witch. Sorry, I was cold. That's why my hands is on my shirt. The tail end of Ocarina of Time, and who were instrumental in the upbringing of the Gingerhead delinquent Ganondorf. Their mischievous game plan: to resurrect Ganon himself through some weird culty ceremony. To this end, they infiltrate the worlds of Holodrum and Laburna, where they kidnap the titular Oracle of Seasons and Ages. Somebody always Din kidnapping somebody in this Using game, bro. Using the power of the Triforce, Link is transported to the two aforementioned worlds, where he defeats the lieutenants of Twin Rover to bring peace and order back to their realms. All of this is in vain, however, as Twin Rover kidnaps Zelda with a view to sacrificing her as part of their resurrection Bro, ceremony. Zelda is always the easy Link target. Link disrupts the witches mid-ceremony and <laughs> saves Zelda. Easy, and as a result, bro. Twin Rover sacrifice themselves, and this brings Ganon back once again. As the ceremony was only half finished, this iteration of Ganon is something of a brainless pig, a shadow of his porky glory. A brainless Ugh, pig. Sorry about that turn of phrase. Anyway, Link defeats the gormless Ganon, which brings the Oracle games to a close. Okay, a link between worlds, okay. I love the wordplay. Centuries pass in the wake of the Oracle games, in which time the Triforce is split, with the wisdom piece remaining Dang, in the really hands cold of down the royal family, crazy. the power Triforce returning to the steel-sealed Ganon, and the courage slab going AWOL, awaiting a new hero to come and find it. Yes, Inter sir. Hero, link come the through. The blacksmith handily also called Link, at the beginning of A Link Between Worlds, which is very much a spiritual sequel, as well as an actual sequel, I guess, to A Link to the Past. Which means the story is pretty much a rerun of the SNES classic. That said, there is a whole load of fresh story content within Link Between Worlds, namely the introduction of a whole new world called Lowrule. Yeah, technically it's another parallel universe in the ilk of the Dark World, but bro, there's just so time. much to Zelda. It's crazy. Between Worlds sees an evil sorcerer known as Yuga infiltrate Hyrule in a bid to kidnap the descendants of the Sages. So far, so familiar. While out delivering a sword, Link stumbles upon Yuga mid-kidnap, and well. 
He witnesses the Zap. evil wizard straight up turning a poor lass into a painting. Yuga knocks Link out for his troubles and put her on a shirt. In Bro, Link he put her on a shirt. With the help of a mysterious bunny eared traveler named Ravio, yeah, finally tracks Bro like Yuga down, only to be turned into a painting himself. Instead of living out his days as a piece oh. of street art, Link has the power to switch between 2D and 3D at will thanks That's to hard. the I like that. intervention of That's a hard. magical bracelet given to him by Ravio. Using this newfound gimmick, Link discovers that Yuga is, surprise, surprise, planning on resurrecting Ganon. Put Zelda on a shirt. A little deeper, it turns out that there's a whole load more at stake. After Zelda is kidnapped by Yuga and taken back to Lowrul, Link follows in pursuit and discovers the tragic history of Hyrule's dark twin. My bad. You see, it turns out that Lowrul had its own Triforce at one point, which was destroyed when the people of the land fought over its power. Link also mm. meets Princess Hilda, a dark-haired doppelganger of Zelda, who helps him keep Yuga at bay while he can track down the Triforce of Courage. But wait, there's one more twist. Okay. It turns out that Hilda is actually playing Link, as she's in league with Yuga and his plan to resurrect Link, Ganon. Link, you can't trust him, yo. Link, you can't Hyrule's trust him, bro. Force to replace their own destroyed one. This all comes to a head when Link defeats Yuga and Hilda with the help of Ravio before yes, uniting sir. the Triforce. And as he's a good egg, our Link, he wishes on the Triforce for peace and prosperity to return to Lowrul. Of course, it's Link. Which brings the game to a happy ending with not one realm saved, but two. Triforce Heroes. Right, next up on the timeline is the most inconsequential Zelda adventure to date. Zelda. And I do not say that lightly. After saving Hyrule and Lowrul, our victorious blacksmith hero travels far and wide, eventually finding himself in the land of Hytopia. Yeah. The most fashion conscious of all the Zelda realms. Here he takes up a job listing, asking for heroes with pointy ears and truly epic sideburns. Oh, that's him. Nintendo's words, not mine. That's to him. To break a curse that an evil witch has cast on the princess. Yep, Triforce Heroes is literally a game about saving a princess from a cursed jumpsuit. Long story short, Wait, Link and what? a couple of look-alike lads, this is a three-player multiplayer game after all, venture into oh, a kingdom known I didn't as even the know that. Lands to confront the witch responsible. They find said witch, drive her away, and Bob's your uncle, the curse is broken. They return to the incredibly vain kingdom of Hytopia, and the princess no longer looks like a turd, so that counts for a win, I guess. Wait, that was it? The Legend of Zelda. Right, from the frivolity of high fashion to the decline of the entire kingdom of Hyrule. Damn, that's a tonal whiplash. Okay, before we dive into the story of the original 1986 Zelda, which yeah. sits next on our timeline, 1986? there's a little bit of backstory that we learn later on in its sequel, The Adventure of Link. In the wake of the complete Triforce returning to the royal family of Hyrule, successive generations of kings used it to retain peace and order across the kingdom. Until one of them just decided, nah, this power might go to someone's head eventually. So that king hid the Triforce of Courage away and entrusted his daughter Zelda with the Triforce of Wisdom. Okay. Unfortunately, this plan completely backfired, and it cast a spell across the land of Hyrule, which eventually led to its decline. Not only that, but his prat of a son the king literally folded the power of his father. And under the influence of an evil wizard, there's a lot of those about in this timeline, yeah. he puts his sister Zelda into a long, deep sleep. Finally coming to his senses, the prince places his dormant husk of a sister in a sacred altar, and her story Give is it passed a, down that's from no white to generation treatment, bro. as the tragedy of Princess Zelda the First. Which itself is a little bit confusing in the context of this timeline, as we've already had a handful of Zeldas. Yeah, and, hey, yeah. Oh, here we are with Zelda the First. Anyway, all of this was backstory to the original 1986 Legend of Zelda. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, it makes so, sense. time I got back to that. Ganon is back once again, because why the hell not by this point, and the reigning Princess Zelda, not sure what number Straight she is, demon nuisance, the bro. the Triforce of Wisdom into eight chunks, which she hides across the land so Ganon and his minions Oh my god, those flashes was killing my eyes for a sec. A young hero turns up in the devastated kingdom of Hyrule, which is now a shadow of its former glory, and he finds his way into the path of Impa, Zelda's handmaiden, who instructs him to seek out the eight Triforce pieces so he can defeat Ganon. He okay. does. The end. But this ending is far from happily ever after. The Adventure of Link. Yes, sir. After defeating Ganon, Link decides to stick around Hyrule and help clean up the mess that Ganon has left. And there's a lot of mess. You see, Ganon's minions are still running amok across the land. Oh, lands, Ganon's and goons. His a goons. Attempt by planning to sprinkle the blood of Link on Ganon's charred remains, which is a bonkers plan, but I'm sold. 
Anyway, six years pass, and on Link's 16th birthday, the crest of the royal family appears on the back of his hand. Side note, that little detail about Link being 16 in Adventure of Link means that the hero in the original Legend of Zelda was 10, and that fact just blows my mind. I don't he was, he was putting people on a, bro, he was literally carrying the game when he was 10 years old, that's crazy. tells him about the tragedy of Princess Zelda the first. Now that he's come of age, Impa implores Link to search for the Triforce of Courage, in a bid to unite the complete Triforce once again and save Zelda the first. She gives him an ancient scroll which eventually leads him to the Great Palace, and the resting place of the final Triforce piece. After an epic final battle with the Guardian Deity and a shadow version of himself, Link is victorious in uniting the Triforce. Of course he is, he uses he's a his power to awaken Princess Zelda the First from her long nap, disrupts the attempts to resurrect Ganon, and hey ho, peace. Man, I'm wishing for a million dollars. She can wake up viral, naturally. Which brings this branch of the timeline to a close. Well, for now at least. But before Link can even think about putting his feet up with a good cuppa, it's time to rewind back to that pivotal timeline split all the way back at Ocarina of Time's conclusion. Wait, what? The second timeline? Okay, we're back at the ending of Ocarina of Time, or more specifically, the first meeting between Link and Zelda, which is still the first meeting for Zelda, but technically the second for Link. Gosh, uh, let me explain. Okay. Right, so after defeating Ganondorf, Link travels back to his childhood, but retains all of his memories as an adult, chiefly that of Ganondorf's treachery. He hightails it to Zelda to tell her and shows her the Triforce of Courage on the back of his hand as proof. Zelda believes him, Ganondorf is thrown in jail, and the crisis is averted before it can all kick off in the first place. To make doubly sure that Ganondorf will never enter the Sacred Realm, Zelda entrusts Link with the Ocarina of Time and tells him to venture far away from Hyrule. Link hops on Start a tiny that boy with the notes. just look at how cute she is, and journeys off into the wilderness. He travels so far, he literally breaks the fabric of time and space and haphazardly hops into an alternate dimension where he gets turned into the long-dead spirit of a Deku scrub. Yeah, did I mention that Majora's Mask is weird as f <laughs> Anyway, Link finds himself in the land of Termina, which is a strange parallel world of sorts to Ocarina <laughs> of Time's Hyrule, <laughs> yeah. featuring a whole load of characters that look vaguely familiar. Largely because it came out two years after Ocarina of Time, and Nintendo reused a lot of the same assets, but we'll give them a pass because the game's a stone-cold banger. Yeah, Termina I mean, yeah. is having something of a crisis of its own, and by crisis I mean the literal apocalypse is nigh. Signposted by a massive grinning moon that is about to crash down and flatten everything. After chatting to a seriously creepy mask salesman, Link learns that the world is in this situation because a powerful mask, the titular one belonging to Majora, has fallen that into the hands a of a tiki mask. skull kid who's up to no good. And so Link ventures off around Termina to right the wrongs in the world, and there are a lot Boy, of this whole world ugly. The fire-loving Gorons are frozen, there's a load of aliens abducting cows, and there's even a disembodied hand emerging from a toilet. Remember, I did say Majora's Mask was weird as f By using the Ocarina of Time, Link is able to get through all these weird little jobs by traveling back in time to see out the final oh, three Nintendo days 64. of his life over and over again. And he eventually fixes everything to the point where he can face the Skull Kid himself. Oh, and he also enlists the help of four handy giants to literally hold the moon in place, you know, which helps. It turns out that Majora's Mask itself is causing all the carnage, and after a really odd final battle, Link defeats the mask, returns it to the creepy salesman, and is on his way to a location. Nah, that salesman, bro. You, you need to be fire, bro. Twilight Princess. I've heard about this. Meanwhile, back in Hyrule, years have passed since the events of Ocarina of Time, and our old friend Ganondorf is finally set to be executed for his crimes. He's taken to a sacred place known as the Arbiter uh -oh. where he's executed by a great big bloody sword right to the chest. Only, this doesn't kill him. As he's in possession of the Triforce of Power, he survives the impaling only to be banished I'm still alive. from the aforementioned Twilight Realm by the Sages. You see, the Twilight Realm is a parallel world of sorts. There's really a lot of them knocking about in this franchise. That was created when four light spirits banished they sent their boy to Mars? out of Hyrule. This shadowy locale is populated by a race of people known as the Twilight. And yeah. when Ganondorf rocks up with all his evil thoughts and plans, he inspires one of the Twilight, a wrong un known as Zant, to invade Hyrule. This devilish duo is opposed by the titular Twilight Princess, a lass called Midna, who's cursed by Zant and banished to Hyrule. 
Zant then invades Hyrule, transforms the world into a dense land of twilight, and turns all humans into anxiety-wracked spirits. And that's all just the backstory for Twilight Princess. Straight Link demonic. Hasn't turned up yet. Speaking of Link, this time he's a wolf. You see, as twilight spreads through the land of Hyrule, it finally reaches the outskirts of Link's home village. But instead of turning into a spirit, Link turns into a good boy as a result of him being a descendant of the Hero of Time and possessing the Triforce of Courage. Oh. Speaking of the Hero of Time, he actually rocks up in this game as an embittered old skeleton to dole out sword fighting tips and tricks. But I'm digressing again. So with the help of Midna, Link ventures around Hyrule, catches up with Zelda, clears the land of Twilight, Ooh, Zelda. finds the Master Sword in the ruins of the Temple of Time, snowboards with a Yeti, okay. fixes a broken mirror, and eventually travels to the Twilight Realm itself to destroy Zant. But that's just half the job done. With Ganondorf back in Hyrule, Link and Midna confront him in the castle's throne room. And after not one, not two, but three bouts in the ring with him, Ganondorf is finally to <laughs> with a good old fashioned master sword to the chest. It didn't work last time, but this isn't any old sword. I wonder what made them change their color from blonde to, to from result. blonde to brown on both Zant Link and, and Zelda. Ganondorf gone, the curse on Hyrule and Midna is lifted. And as Link turns to celebrate with her, he's shocked by the true form of the Twilight Princess standing before him. And with that, the game comes to a close when Midna says her farewells to Zelda and Link before traveling back to her own realm. And in her last act before departing, she shatters the mirror of Twilight and breaks the connection between the two worlds forever. I wanted to see you, baby! Said I did okay, not want to see her. Several hundred years have passed since the events of Twilight Princess. Okay. And peace has extended across the realms of Hyrule. Good. Especially in the relations between the Hillians and the Gerudo people. Good. The tribe that Ganondorf was born into. But here's the kicker. Somehow, rather inexplicably, if you ask me, Ganondorf is back. How, you may ask? Well, he's just sort of born again into the Gerudo tribe, ready and willing to tear the place up. He starts by trespassing into a forbidden pyramid. This man was born to evil, bro. Trident before he nabs a dark mirror, which is remarkably familiar to the one in Twilight Princess, but has absolutely nothing to do with it for mm, reasons. To add insult mm, to injury, the demon thief resurrects our old pal Varty. Uh -oh. Remember him? The old wind wizard himself kicks into life, and the evil pair kidnap Zelda and her maidens and enshroud the world of Hyrule in darkness, as is the tradition. Zelda, you are 0 and 20 Link, against the kidnappers, bro. FOMO, draws the fabled four sword, which hasn't been used for millennia by this point, I guess, and he immediately quadruples himself. The quartet venture around Hyrule, fixing the light world bit by bit before defeating Varty at the top of his perilously high wind palace. As they escape the crumbling palace, they're confronted by Ganon, who's also easily vanquished. The Lynx use the four sword to seal the giant pig away, and with that, the ancient weapon is placed. Stood no chance, bro. There's four of us. You're not beating us, buddy. Nintendo decides to make a multiplayer Zelda <laughs> that's not Triforce Heroes. Right, with another timeline at an end, time to rewind time once again back to that crucial split in the chronology. Okay. The Wild Waker. Okay, we're back at the great timeline split at the end of Ocarina for the last time. Promise. This branch of the chronology follows the timeline that shoots off from the events in Ocarina, where the hero of time travels back to his childhood. Hmm. But instead of erasing this timeline a la Back to the Future, it just creates a whole new timeline a la Avengers Endgame. Are you still with me? I'm really. Uh, I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on, bro. Anyway, Ganondorf is sealed away as we're following on from the adult timeline ending of Ocarina of Time. Yeah. The peace once again extends across Hyrule. By now, you should know that that peace will be short lived. Yeah. And lo and behold, Ganondorf is able to crawl his way out from the depths to wreak havoc once again. In the wake of the Hero of Time having zapped back to his childhood and gone off adventuring to Termina, etc., etc., <laughs> the King of Hyrule turns to the gods for help. And this they man wants a his lick back every time, bro. Plan of action. So they seal Hyrule and flood the whole damn world. Wow. Fortunately, the good people of Hyrule survive by traveling to the tops of the tallest mountains in the land. And in this new water world, a bit like the movie, but definitely not the movie, they emerge from the flood on isolated islands across the ocean. The king himself I mean, I stays it. They behind in the it. sealed castle of Hyrule, sending his daughter to the waves above to live out her life with the common folk, albeit with a piece of the Triforce of Wisdom. Years pass and Ganondorf returns like a bad penny. Of course. Stirring up shit across the seas. That man back at it like a bad habit, fortress. bro. 
he seeks out and murders two of the sages, and starts his search for Zelda and the Triforce of Wisdom. The king also wakes from his slumber, and his spirit takes up residence in a dashing red boat known as the King of the Red Lines. The king boat goes searching for his descendant, as well as for a new hero who can take up ownership of the Triforce of Courage. The former he finds in the shoes of brash pirate leader Tetra, while the latter he finds on a charming little island. This okay. strapping young lad, also handily known as Link, has been searching for his sister, who's been kidnapped as part of Ganondorf's enterprise to steal young girls until he finds Zelda, which is an absolutely mad plan to stop and think too much about it. Okay, now all the major pieces are finally on the board for Wind Waker, let's break it all down. Okay, so Link and the King Boat venture off across the seas to prove his worth for the Triforce of Courage. Yeah. In the process, they save Link's little sister, yeah. the descendants of the Kakiri and the Zoras, who are now little tree sprites and dragon birds respectively, oh, that's nice. and chart a series of maps with a talking fish. After proving his courage, Link travels beneath the waves to Hyrule Castle, where he grabs the Master Sword. Of course. Little side note, but I love all the stained glass windows here that depict the battle with Ganon and the Six Sages from Ocarina of Time. Oh, that, that, I can't look, that, that, really that looks hard. That looks hard. I can't lie. For me. Anyway, the Master Sword is next to useless against Ganondorf, and Link and Tetra barely escape with their lives during their attempted attack on the Forsaken Fortress. And it's at this point that the King of Red Lions seeks to move matters along a bit, first by informing Tetra of her ancestry and uniting the Triforce of Wisdom, and secondly in directing Link to seek out the shards of the Triforce of Courage, so they can more successfully put an end to Ganondorf. And so we fast forward a bit to the section where Link has all the relevant Triforce pieces and can retake the assault to Ganondorf. A lot okay. of things happen in a short back. space of time. First, as Ganondorf reaches out to take the completed Triforce, the actual king rocks up and touches it first, and wishes for the ancient land of Hyrule to be destroyed once and for all, to make way for a better future. This irks the demon thief somewhat, as he kinda had hopes on ruling over said land, but hey ho, unlucky Ganondorf lad. Link and Zelda kick into gear and fight off Ganondorf with a combo of light arrows and the Master Sword itself. Come here! To finally defeat the evil bastard okay, the Link? the head. Which has always felt this man Link is me, what 18 and 1 against Ganondorf, bro. Get wrecked. Anyway, Zelda and Link escape Hyrule as it crumbles around them, and the king opts to stay behind like the captain of a sinking ship. I respect and it, so man. So the never-ending cycle of Hyrule and the it. Triforce finally comes to an end. Well, at least in this timeline, I guess. But this story branch is far from over. Phantom Hourglass. Hey, shout out to that king for, so for standing Link through, bro. Finished, Link and Zelda, who's now back in the guise of Tetra, set sail in search of new lands. Their travels take them into the haunted waters of the ghost ship, which promptly kidnaps Tetra and throws Link overboard. He awakes on Mercy Island and befriends the wise old Oceus, his pet fairy Sela, and the charismatic Captain Linebeck. Charismatic? As ventures to catch the ghost ship, he learns that Oceus w is drip. actually the local Ocean King, who's in a long-running battle against some kind of evil squid called Bellum, and his pet fairy is actually the spirit of courage. Linebeck is just plain old Linebeck though, so nothing new there. En route, Link secures another legendary sword, of course. falls around with time once again courtesy of the titular Phantom Hourglass, and defeats Bellum. Peace returns to the seas and Oceus turns back into his true form, which is a giant silver whale. But here's the kicker. When Link and Tetra find themselves back in their own world, only 10 minutes have passed since they left on their voyage, which is a proper ballsy Link's Awakening-esque move by Nintendo. Wait, what? Spirit Tracks. And so after their supposedly 10 minute long adventure in Phantom Hourglass, Link and Tetra continue on with their mission to find new lands. They eventually call Land Ho on a new continent, which has a mysterious tower at its centre with a bunch of rail tracks stemming from it. And despite there clearly being some form of settlement here, Link and Tetra colonise this new land as the new kingdom of Hyrule. Okay. Fast forward 100 years and weird sh** going down a new Hyrule. The aforementioned tracks are disappearing left, right and centre, and the reigning princess Zelda wants to know why. Zelda baby! She a descendant of Link and an engineer named Alfonso to go and investigate. Turns out that a shifty looking politician wearing two hats is the culprit. God, I love Nintendo. <laughs> anyway, two hats is called Cole, and his ultimate plan is to resurrect a lad called Maladus, a demon king who's sealed at the top of that aforementioned tower. 
He succeeds in part of his plan, which is to separate Zelda from her physical body to make a vessel for the incoming demon. She snatched her soul. This backfires though, as Spirit Zelda is instrumental in helping Link unify the kingdom, relay the spirit tracks, and ultimately defeat Maladus himself, who upon release takes on the form of an evil train. It's soul. And with Cole and Maladus vanquished, Link and Zelda are entrusted with caring over the land, and from there the kingdom of New Hyrule prospers. The end. That's it. Except it's not. Breath of the Wild. I'm about to say, I'm like, wait, what? I'm about to say, that's the end? Breath of the Wild, of Here's course, I know Nintendo this one. Nintendo kind of just stops caring about their own damn timeline. You see, Breath of the Wild wasn't initially given a placement on the overarching chronology for a good while after its release. About a year after the game launched though, Japanese publication Famitsu asked the devs the essential question of where the game sat on the already convoluted timeline. This game looks Their really answer, good, bro. and I quote, was, well, of course it's at the very end, but I get what you're asking. It's which timeline it's at the very end of. That's up to the player's imagination, isn't it? Which kind of means that they just haven't figured that out yet. So let's for a moment entertain this nonsense and say that Breath of the Wild takes place at the end of all of the timelines. It still leaves a lot for the imagination, which I guess is the point according to the developers. Anyway, there's plenty of evidence of Hyrule's history across Breath of the Wild's vast map, both ancient and recent. And by ancient, I mean 10,000 years ago, and by recent, I mean a century ago. So basically, Breath of the Wild is potentially so very far into the future that its placement on the timeline doesn't even matter. But hey ho, let's oh, get to the story. Okay. Most of the key narrative beats of Breath of the Wild actually take place through extensive flashbacks. During these, we learn that the Kingdom of Hyrule was once a hugely advanced civilization, and the people used this technological prowess to protect themselves from the endlessly repeating Ganon Apocalypse. To this end, they built themselves four huge divine beasts and a whole <laughs> army of guardian robots. This man, to Ganon help them wants the beef. Of Ganon, which they did. Yay! Until the next time Ganon reared his ugly head, that is. Not yay. Anyway, fast forward to about... Okay, that's, that cat anyway, scared me. Fast forward to about a century preceding... That cat scared the life out of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it real. Hello. Anyway, you guys just keep the cat right there, bro. A century preceding the events of Breath of the Wild, and we catch up with the latest incarnation of Princess Zelda and the Beast Piloting Champions, who are gearing up for the inevitable next round with Ganon. The he still the want Zelda beef? Oh my god, bro. I'm twinning no against you, bro. That, she relentlessly pursues oh any and Lord, all bro. means with which to hold back the oncoming Ganon storm. Unfortunately, she runs out of time before Ganon's next attack. And in the ensuing battle, her protector, a young lad called Link, is hurt, fatally wounded at the hands of the Guardians themselves, who have been possessed by Ganon. Long story short, Zelda whisks Link away to the Shrine of Resurrection, hides the fabled Master Sword, and in a completely badass move, locks herself and Ganon away in Hyrule Castle. Hey man, Zelda a real one, bro. Immortal. Link, the poor lad, eventually wakes up fully healed a whopping 100 years later, with absolutely no memory. After and he's supposed to be healed, he slept for 100 man, years. He turns out to be the long dead spirit of the King of Hyrule. Link ventures off on an epic quest to take back the four divine beasts from Ganon. Yeah, you gotta get your link back, bro. Pig himself. And after a lengthy battle, Link emerges victorious, and as he and Zelda stand over the battlefield, they look to the future to rebuild the devastated Hyrule. Tears of the Kingdom. But that future might have to wait, as there's another destructive force that wants to end the world of Hyrule for good. Or at least that's the direction that Tears of the Kingdom seems to be going. Yes, sir. Ostensibly a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom expands the world of Hyrule into the skies, possibly as a throwback to Skyward Sword right at the very beginning of this timeline. And yes, sir. And there's a whole sir. lot of information to go on right now, that hasn't stopped people from theorizing about how the last two games fit into the Zelda timeline. Chief among those theories is the return of the Gerudo lad himself, Ganondorf, whose actions pretty Diabolical much started heathen menace. in this timeline. How this ties into the wider timeline, though, is anyone's guess at the point I'm writing this, which is about a month away from the release of Tears of the Kingdom. But I'm calling it now, my guess is that Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom slot in at the end of the Child Era timeline. I don't Early think so. Tell, though. And that, pals, is the Zelda timeline. Oh Explains my the best god. Of I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I like me looking forward to Tears of the Kingdom. If you like, hey man, shout out to this guy right here.
for breaking down the entire video. I learned so much. Um, didn't even know anything about the, uh, the about the Zara. Like I said Zara Zelda series at all. I really wanted to get into it, so I I'm glad that I sat down and actually uh, watched it with you guys. You guys, I know you guys were just just begging me to like catch up on the lore. I was like, you know what? Cool. I caught up. I know everything now. Uh, I didn't even know that there was so much to this like game. First of all, I didn't know that it came out in uh, 1986 or 1987. I didn't even know that. Literally didn't even know that. And then there's multiple different like timelines. I oh wow, it's just crazy, bro. It is crazy. Comment down below. What is your favorite Legend of Zelda game? Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out. Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out.